A new predictive model estimates around 12,000 zoonotic viruses exist that can infect people, which is almost 98% fewer than previous estimates. Welcome to Microbial Minutes. This is ASM's update on what's hot in microbial sciences, the viruses by the numbers edition. I'm Julie Wolf, and we'll be discussing a paper that was published in Nature, Ecology, and Evolution, which concludes that fewer viruses can infect humans than previously estimated. Now, we know that the number of identified viruses has been increasing, in part thanks to new sequencing-based technologies, and we've talked about a number of these on former Microbial Minutes sessions. But the question remains, how many viruses exist? Which has been a big pro- uh, question within the virus field for a, for a, since viruses were discovered. In this case, we'll be talking about viruses that specifically infect mammals. Um, And within uh, the mammalian sphere, previous models have suggested that there are a number of viruses that can cross from human, or I'm sorry, from their animal reservoirs uh, into humans. Those are called zoonotic viruses. Uh, And within viruses that exist in mammals, half a million to a million are predicted from former models to be these zoonotic viruses. What this group wants to ask is how predictive models can better incorporate ideas such as host sharing into that viral diversity prediction. So many of these previous models are predicated on a certain number of viruses being present in every specific species. Uh, But in truth, many viruses can infect multiple species. Take for example, rabies virus that can infect almost every single type of mammal. Uh, And so one of the things that they've incorporated, that this group has incorporated into their predictive model, is considering the host sharing capabilities of the viral types. So here they've made networks of different viruses, either zoonotic on the left or non-zoonotic on the right, with the different nodes um, being uh, indicating the of hosts. So we have rodents, bats, um, uh, chimps, and uh, uh, ungulates, all of these things are very heavily represented in both um, in both networks, but you can see that things such as bats are a little more prominent in the zoonotic uh, network. Now, on the next page, we'll see that they incorporated this, but they also looked at how much of a network is being sampled. They found that the network sampling size can affect the viral pr- uh, diversity predictions, such that if you look at only 10% of mammal species, that will give you a different prediction than looking at, say, 50% or 100% of mammal species. And it doesn't correlate uh, linearly. So they, they've looked at different um, mathematical models and determined the best way to make those predictions. And then they had to look at different viral types independently, since, of course, um, RNA and DNA ho- uh, virus have different host species breadth. RNA viruses tend to have more species that a single viral um, species can infect, whereas DNA viruses tend to be a little more restricted in the number of host species that they can infect. So they analyzed these separately before combining to make their final predictions, which are shown in the tables on the right-hand side here. Uh, They looked at two different tables. So um, one of them is considering 100% of their network, meaning all 5,291 mammalian species. Uh, And another one is a little more conservative. Table two on the bottom um, is an iterative fit of the 50% of their network, uh, which makes a more conservative estimate. Um, So using those conservative numbers, we can see that they estimated nearly 56,000 possible total viruses exist in all mammal populations. Uh, which is fewer than or less than 10% of previous estimates. Within that 56,000, nearly 13,000 of those are potential zoonotic viruses that could infect people. Uh, Compared to the previous estimates of half a million, this is quite a dramatic decrease in those viral estimates. Uh, On the next page, we'll we'll see that, as I mentioned, many different um, surveys and uh, models have tried to make this estimation in the past as well. This has been the subject of blogs, um, such as the virology blog um, hosted by Vincent Rockinello, and previous studies in MBio. And just last year in science, the Global Virome Project came up with that 500,000 uh, human viral zoonotic viruses uh, estimate. Um, but this, this new lower number has a lot of important implications, as highlighted by the authors in a press release, which was released by Georgetown, the university where the research was conducted. First author, Colin Carlson, says 
that you can think about the the large number of viruses, the previous number, 500,000, is too many to actually find and characterize. Uh, but if you think about 10 or 12,000, as they, they've estimated here, that's the maximum number of Facebook friends that one can have. So that's a, a number that perhaps seems a little more manageable. And Carlson goes on to say that knowing how many viruses uh, will allow preparative work, such as um, vaccine development, outbreak tracing, and communication and capacity building for potential outbreaks. This is echoed by uh, another author, Romain Garnier, who stated that the lower number of viruses in general and of zoonotic viruses in particular simply allows the allocation of more resources to each potential threat. So there are 98% fewer viruses that are uh, estimated to infect humans in the world. But at 12,000, that's still a lot of viruses that have yet to be discovered and studied. As those discoveries are made, I'm sure we'll cover them here on Microbial Minutes. So go ahead and hit subscribe and you'll get all the updates on newly discovered viruses. I'd like to thank you for listening and thank Ray Ortega for our production. I'm Julie Wolf, and I'll be with you next time on Microbial Minutes.